Now this is the Van Gogh VPPDS pedal board made of aircraft grade aluminium or aluminium with some great and unique features. First off, it's really light and really solid, feels sturdy and weighs in at around 1.3 kilos or about 2.8 pounds. It'll hold around five normal size pedals, you know, like the boss size pedals, but of course you can get more on there if you're using mini pedals. And the first great feature on the board are the legs that fold out to angle the board. I don't have them on my ruck board, for example, and they're a really useful feature to have. They lock perfectly in place to angle it and then fold back in when not in use to transport it in the padded carrying case. Now the case itself is really well padded and it's got decent zips on it and it's even got some extra straps to security guitar when carrying it or as a backpack. Everything has been thought of here. The only addition uh, or the only nice addition would have been a pouch to carry the accessories but overall a really good gig bag. Here's one of the best features on the Van Gogh board. You get a really good isolated power supply built in. So the risk of ground hum is minimized. You get eight nine volt DC, 100 milliamp power sockets. I'm guessing the reason you get eight power sockets is either for mini pedals or to run an extra pedal like a wah or whatever, just off to the side of the board. Having an all in one power option here is a useful thing as you won't need extra power adapters, just the Van Gogh board and it's built in power supply. There's no 12 volt sockets, but you can get 18 volts using the Y splitter that's included. Just use two of the nine volt sockets, what a superb touch. You also get eight right angled power cables and of course the Y splitter for that 18 volt pedal uh, to power all the pedals. Van Gogh have thought of everything here and having them right angled makes sense as it will keep the whole board tidy if your pedal has a power socket that's on the top or on the side. There's no overhang from the power cable. You also get the power supply with the pedal board, US pins on it just for your info and it works with either 110 or 240 volts so no problems there has a power switch at the back of the board as well, which is a great thing to have. No need to keep unplugging the power supply when you want to put the whole thing in standby or switch it off, for example. Saves wear and tear on the power supply connector. The power supply cable itself is around 10 foot long, so plenty enough to reach any power socket, I would imagine. Now, of course, the most unique thing about the Van Gogh board is the light bar, as you saw at the beginning of the video. This has several features, a sound to light function where it will respond to the sounds in the room. It's responding to my voice at the moment. There's a small microphone that picks up that sound. Or you can run your guitar through the board and it will respond to your playing. It has a built-in control to adjust the gain of the light bar, which doesn't affect the gain of the uh, guitar signal, just the light bar intensity. Alternatively, you can switch it off or mute it by connecting the guitar in on the back and running out to the amp from the last pedal, entirely up to you. But I quite like the idea of the light bar responding to the guitar signal. What do you think? Just a gimmick? Let me know below. It's a really sturdy, well-built pedal board with some great unique features. I do like that it's silver in colour too and not black, which so many boards are these days. And there's plenty of Velcro included too, and you can decide which side you stick on the board. Everything is included with this board and I really like it, definitely worth the money. Now Shane from In The Blues did mention that the light bar would have been great as a tuner, and I think so too. That would have been the icing on the cake. What do you think though? Thanks for watching as always, and if you enjoyed this video, check that one out. Cheers.